Thanks for your introdu nice introduction. My name is Yuko Wang, a fifth year PhD student at UCSB. Today, I would like to share our work, TCGN, bridging sparse GN computation and dense tensor core on GPUs. Nowadays, graphs are everywhere in our daily life. To analyze the graph effectively, graph neural network has merged as a useful hammer. For example, we can easily find its application in social networks for friend recommendation, financial service for fault detection, power grid for failure detection, molecular biology for the property prediction. Next, we will see how GNN operates under the hood. In the first diagram, we will show the basic computation flow of GNN. Like DNN, GNN also organized by layers that are stacked together. Each GNN layer consists of an aggregation and update operation, where the former follows the graph-like operation, such as the page rank, to get the information from the neighbors, while the latter updates the node itself by using the information from the neighbors. In the second part, we will show how the basic operators that are used by GNN in general. The first one is the neighbor aggregation that follows the sparse matrix and dense matrix multiplication called the SPMM. In the right, we can see that the sparse adjacent matrix of a graph is multiplied with the dense embedding matrix for neighbor aggregation. And the second computation is the node feature computation, which follows the sampled dense dense matrix multiplication. The node embedding matrix and the transposed node embedding matrix are first multiplied together and then we will apply a sparse adjacent matrix as a mask to filter out the output results. On the other side, in parallel with kind of development in the algorithm, there is a trend to leverage the powerful units like the tensor core on the recent GPUs for deep learning acceleration. In the figure in the right, it illustrates the layout of the tensor core in the modern GPUs in the, its sub stream processor subcore. Currently, tensor core support the compute primitives like the D equals A times B, where the matrix tile A and B are in a certain position, like the FP16, while the matrix output like C and D are in the full position or in 32. In terms of programmability of tensor core, there are multiple ways. The typical way to program tensor core including using the Kublas API, like the Kublas SGN, and, but in this kind of scenario, we will have a limited precision options. Depends on what kind of Kublas API you choose. And in the second way, it's more flexible. We can use the WAP level API for multiplication. In, uh, in short, it's WMMA APIs in Kublas. So this work we will be focusing on the second methods to develop our framework. However, the gap between the basic GN operations and the high performance GPU units still exists and the programming on GPU to harvest its performance benefits is still challenging. And we summarize the challenge in several aspects. The first one is that existing frameworks like the PyTorch or TensorFlow, they support the deep learning, deep learning operations and mainly focus on the dense operation, like the dense gym operations and their optimization. The irregular nature of the GN computation makes them hard to harvest the real performance gains because they lack of efficient sparse operators. And the second part is that existing sparse library that are dedicated developed by vendors like the NVIDIA, such as CoolSparse, cool can only leverage the CUDA cores for acceleration, which underutilize the resources of the existing GPUs that have the tensor core equipped. And with that, it has the problem of underutilization of the GPUs and on the new hardware that can deliver high performance. The third point is that even though there are some trials or efforts to apply the tensor core based kernels, they are suffered from several limits. For example, the existing uh, tensor core tailored kernels, like the block sparse kernels, they are only focused on the rigid sparsity pattern. For example, like the 224 in terms of the block sparsity. So this limits their applicability to more general settings that cannot be covered in these special cases. To bridge such a gap, the performance between the performance hungry GNN and the powerful GPU, we analyze several design options. In this talk, we'll be mainly focusing on accelerating the SPMM cases. And we have a two direction of uh, efforts. The first one, we try the SPMM on the CUDA core. In short, it, we will let the GPU face the GNNs. And we profile the basic operation from the CUSPAS kernels. 
And from this kernel level profiling, we notice a low cache hit rate and low occupancy of the GPUs, which indicates the underutilization of the GPU resources. This is because of its low computation intensity that could hardly achieve a high performance on the modern GPUs. And uh, the second direction we try is to let the sparse GNN for GPU computation paradigm to fit the dense stream computation on the GPU. That is where the GPU excelled at. While it can potentially improve the computation intensity, we also noticed a huge amount of memory consumption and extremely low efficient computation, which limits its ability on the modern GPU, which is normally equipped with the tens of gigabytes in terms of the global memory. With that being said, in short, our conclusion here is that applied separate operation on each or either of this direction could hardly work. Therefore, it driven a holistic optimization that can harvest from both sides. So my question here is that, can we match the sparse GNN workload with the GPU to achieve the high computation efficiency and a better utilization of the GPU resources? Here, we introduce our solution, TCGNN, the first tensor core-based GNN acceleration design based on GPUs. Our key idea here is to let the input sparse graph to fit the dense computation of the tensor core through comprehensive algorithmic and the system designs. Specifically, at the input level, we de develop a new sparse graph translation technique that can effectively identify those non-zero tiles in the adjacent matrix and condense those non-zero elements from those tiles into a fair number of the dense tiles. At the kernel level, for efficiently processing the uh, GNNs of, on, on the CUDA cores, we leverage the existing collaboration of the CUDA core and the tensor core, where the CUDA core mainly focuses on how to load the data from the global memory, while the tensor core focuses on how to get a faster speed when we, after we're loading the data. Finally, at the framework level, we integrate TCGNN with the popular PyTorch framework to reduce the extra learning efforts while improving the user productivity. Here comes the overall design of the TCGN. We take the input graph as input and uh, put it into our sparse graph translation module and to compress the sparse graph into a fewer number of the dense tile for tensor core processing. After the processing, the compressed graph along with the initial node feature embedding will enter the main computation module for either the neighbor aggregation computation or node feature generation. Those two modules will leverage the CUDA core for data loading and tensor core for computation. And the output will be an updated node embedding matrix with aggregated neighbor embeddings information on each node. And here is our basic programming patterns of using our module. Basically, we only need three steps. The first step is load the TCGN module. The second one is load the graph. And the third one is the pre-process the graph. With, uh, except that, all other programming patterns is similar to the PyTorch and to build the existing GN module. Let's start with our K-Design for sparse graph translation. Our K-Design will condense the highly irregular input graphs and gist matrix into a fewer number of dense tile tailored for GN computation. As shown in the figure, the regular GN aggregation takes the node embedding matrix and the sparse and gist matrix as the input and generated an out updated node embedding matrix. In our SGT design, for adjacent matrix, in each row window, which consists of several number of the rows, we remap the non-zero elements from its originally scattered columns into a continuous columns to create a condensed row window. Our major observation here is that node neighbor sharing is very common among nodes in the real-world graph. Therefore, applying SGT can effectively merge the unnecessary data loading of the shared neighbors that are, that are, that are shared among different nodes to avoid the high memory cost. By doing so, we can issue a fewer number of load requests to fetch the sparse elements. With this new design, we have several benefits. Firstly, we have a fewer number of iterations to invoke the WMMA primitives. Secondly, we have a fewer number of dense row access for neighbor embedding vectors. Finally, we have a low shared memory usage due to more condensed tile loading. And our SGT design can generally be applicable to any kind of sparse patterns of input graphs that can always yield the correct results as original sparse algorithm. We formulate our sparse graph translation design into an algorithm here. It basically in introduced several steps. Firstly, we will compute the total number of row window based on the height of each WMMA shape, input matrix height. And then we process each row window parallelly. We will get the age of each row window and sort the ages by their source node ID. And then deduplicate those uh, source IDs to merge the data loading from the common shared uh, neighbors. 
And finally, we need to maintain the information of those originally scattered rows in the input, input embedding matrix to those continuous columns in the dense tiles for tensor core computation. We further dive into our tensor core based data flow for SPMM labor aggregation and SDDMM feature computation. And we will focus on the first one. So after our sparse graph translation, we will load the scattered rows of the input embedding matrix into a dense tile. Meanwhile, we will initiate the dense format of our condensed sparse graph in, uh, into our edge connection tiles. These two tiles will be further loaded into a richest fragment, which will be served as the input for tensor core computation. And finally, we, after the computation, we will get the updated the, the embedding matrix as output. The major design idea here is that for the CUDA core uh, based uh, programming, it's more Excel at the fine grained thread level execution. That could be a good candidate for managing the memory intensive data access. While the tensor core, which is more powerful in handling the simple arithmetic operation, like the matrix multiplication and addition, can be well suited for compute intensive gym operations on the dense tile generated from our sparse graph translation. On the right-hand side, similarly for the SDDM-based feature generation and a similar data flow can be applied, except this time, we will first load and initialize the condensed sparse adjacent matrix tile, and then we will use this tile to selectively load the input embedding matrix from different rows of the embedding matrix itself and its transposed embedding matrix. After the loading, we'll move the loaded uh, embedding, uh, embedding tiles into registers and then perform the tensor core computation on those fragments. And finally, after the computation, we generate the edge features based on the embedding tiles and its transposed tiles. One thing to note here is that in edge computation, we also need to read out the generated dense edge features into a sparse edge feature array for later on computation. Based on such data flow, we we'll further map our SPMM design into a GPU processing unit for actual execution. Specifically, for different row windows, we can, we can fur, uh, fully parallelize this computation among different thread blocks. And the processing of different uh, dimension range of embedding metrics can be parallelized by different uh, WAPs. Similar strategy can be applied to SDDMM computation, except that each thread block is assigned to each adjacent matrix row window. And WAP simultaneously iterates through different dimension range of input embedding matrix and its transposed embedding matrix. Here comes to our evaluation. Uh, in our evaluation, we will cover three major types of data set, which is a small data set in the category one, and a medium to large data set in category two. And this kind of data set is a graph kernel data set that has been used by many frameworks like the PyTorch geometry. And the last one, the third, data, uh, third type of data, mainly focusing on the irregular structure and a high sparsity uh, for, the, for the GN computation. And uh, there is some uh, AMAS data set from the real world graphs. And for baseline, we compare with several baselines. The first one is the deep graph library. I think this, this baseline can offer the state of performance. And for the second one is the pattern geometry. This one is more focusing on the programmability to handle different type of the graph input and a different type of the GN, uh, GN models. And for GN model, we consider two typical one. The first one is the graph convolution generator works. For this one, it mainly covers the sparse SPMM and computations. And for the second one, for attention-based graph neural network, this one we will, we will be used to test our design on the, both the SPMM for labor aggregation and the SDDMM for feature generation. And for platform, our design covers, uh, we'll use a desktop with uh, uh, Intel CPU and the RT, uh, uh, NVIDIA RT, uh, RTX 3090 GPUs. In terms of end-to-end -end performance, we compare our design uh, with the DGL and the PyTorch geometry. The overall performance uh, numbers we achieve here is 1.7 compared to this design in terms of the training. And uh, here we notice some performance difference across different uh, kind of data set. And our key observation here is that uh, our design achieve a better speed up on the larger data set like a type three data set versus uh, uh, the first two categories. This can be attributed to our sparse graph translation technique that can effectively translate this kind of sparse graphs to condense them into fewer number of dense tiles and leverage our high performance tensor core for acceleration. While the, on the graph that already exists, some of the degree of the broad sparsity pattern, like the type two graphs, the compress, compression effectively of SGD can be relatively lower. In, the, in those cases, the major source of the performance improvements comes from our tensor core based acceleration. 
Further, we compare our design with the DGO operators, which in terms of its operator level performance. And uh, here we compare with the SPMM, and we got a 1.5 times speed up. And we also compare with the SDDMM in DGO operator, and we get a 6.9 times speed up. The major difference uh, between the SPMM cases and the SDDM cases can be actually built into, uh, into one of the major reasons is that in SPMM cases, the compressed sparse graphs will be used only once because at the time when we selectively load the in dense embedding matrix. While in the SDDMM cases, the compressed sparse adjacent matrix will be used twice when we load the dense embedding matrix itself and its transposed embedding matrix. Therefore, we get a higher, higher speed up. And furthermore, we have a kernel level performance compared with the cool sparse. And here, we achieve a 1.2 times speed up versus cool sparse. And the key here is that on embedding matrix with a larger uh, dimension size, like the 64, our design uh, exhibit higher advantages. This highlights the effectiveness of using tensor core when handling sparse computation with the higher data access intensity on certain of its uh, access dim dimension, for example, the neighbor embedding access. And, uh, uh, and this kind of workload will be uh, found in many domains, including the GN and also some like the real world graph analytics workload. And here are some future work we lay out. Firstly, we can accelerate the pre-processing phase with, with GPU uh, uh, capability, because currently we're focusing on the CPU plus OpenMP. And uh, to tackle this kind of challenge, uh, to tackle this kind of problem, we have one challenge is that uh, we need to achieve uh, intra-web or intra-block sorting for variable length age. Because currently, like the library, high performance library, like the Kube library from NVIDIA, they focus on fixed length sorting plus the zero padding. So there are some overhead and uh, some trade-offs. And secondly, we can do some op support optimization for different uh, precision multiplication because Tensor Core, currently we use the FP32, TF32, because of its compatibility with the FP32. But uh, furthermore, we can have a more adaptive optimization for different input settings because Tensor Core can have a different precision and they have a different shape. For example, FP16, they have uh, two different shapes. And finally, we can also perform the kernel fusion with some other layers, um, because currently our design can be used in either the inference and the training. But for kernel fusion, for example, we fuse our current design in terms of its output uh, with the following layers, like the softmax or the batch normalization. But uh, those kind of cases are limited to the inference, inference scenario. And uh, I think that's all. Thanks for your listening. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us to, uh, with our email. And you can also check our code at the GitHub. And thanks.